Welcome. Welcome, everybody, to Let's Play Sengoku Basara Samurai Heroes. I am your host, Alexander Frost, and this is Episode 1. And oh, have I been looking forward to playing this game. Oh! Mmm! So good! I figure, between doing Samurai Warriors 2, which would be more of the same with Samurai Warriors, and this game, I thought this game would be a little more fun. At least for me. <laughs> I'll be honest. Uh, but this is not actually the first Sengoku Basada game in the series. In fact, you may have even seen this game before. The original game was called Sengoku Basada and was localized in the US as Devil Kings. Yes, that game. Unfortunately, because, and I'm reading it straight off the wiki here, the English language version of the game featured an altered gameplay and a completely different, supposedly more Western audience oriented fantasy story with original characters, which was, however, never used again due to the mostly negative response the localization received from critics as well as consumers. It was bad, let me tell you. While the characters function just the same as they do in this game, as a matter of fact, there are a lot of things that do not differ from the first game and this game. Because they changed the names of the characters... Oh, it was bad. They ended up changing Yukimura Sanada to Scorpio. For some insanely stupid reason. So it was bad. The next game in the series was Sengoku Basada 2 for the PlayStation 2, only in Japan, and was ported to the Wii as Sengoku Basada, also Japan. Sengoku Basada X, the next game, is a 2D fighting game that was built by Arc Systems Works, the same people who did the Guilty Gear series, made primarily for the arcades, but again, only in Japan. There was Sengoku Basada Battle Heroes, a PSP exclusive title, again, Japan. And then what we're playing now, Sengoku Basada 3, or in the US, Sengoku Basada Samurai Heroes. There was an updated version called Sengoku Basada 3 Utage, which was released a year later, but it was never ported to the US. Another game that was developed as a sequel, Sengoku Basada Chronicle Heroes, a PSP sequel, was released in uh, 2011. 
And the fourth game in the main series, Sengoku Basada 4, is to be released early next year for the PS3. But, according to all accounts, it's probably only going to be released in Japan. Which sucks. But that makes this experience that much more precious, because Capcom learned from their mistakes, they didn't change the character names, they didn't try to make it more Western-friendly, just ported it straight up. And they did it right. And I'm going to share it with you, folks. So before we get started here, we're going to start in with the options here. Game settings. Shouldn't be much that needs to be fiddled with, uh, primarily because there's nothing that needs to be fiddled with, really. <laughs> uh, I'm not even going to bother with autosave. I'm just going to leave it alone. I prefer manually saving because, hey, everyone makes mistakes, right? The controller setting. Uh, what is changed there? Let's see. Vertical camera, normal. Horizontal camera, normal. Guard camera, on. Set a camera to return to default position when the guard button is pressed. That's something that was not in Samurai Warriors. I mean, it was, but you never had the option of turning it off, which is kind of nice. Set features to when the guard button is pressed during movement. Guard preference. Evade preference. Oh! Okay, see... Whenever you block in this game, you can actually hold down L1 to block and then use the analog stick to quick evade in one of the four directions. But apparently, you can set it so that you can just tap the button to evade straight up. Which sounds pretty cool, except that it might rob me of the whole guarding thing. So I'm just going to leave it on guard preference. That's what I'm used to. That's what I'm good with. Okay, so the attacks are pretty similar to uh, Samurai Warriors. Square is your normal attack button, or normal art. Special art is triangle, which you can also um, combine with a few other button presses. Circle is your Basada art, or your Muzao attack. You cannot actually stand there and charge up the Muzao gauge. You have to either beat enemies or collect sake jugs. Pretty simple. X is jump. Hero Time is a special mode. There is a third gauge that goes around your character's picture in the lower left side of the screen. You'll see that. When it fills up, you can press the Hero Time button. And when that happens, oh goodness. Time slows down, your attack power increases, and you are able to just basically lay down the law any way you see fit, which is pretty awesome. L1 is guard, of course. R2 is super art, which is as close to a Basada art as you can get without using a gauge. And then, of course, uh, triangle and square is a... R1 is a short, shortcut for pressing R1. R1 is a shortcut for pressing R1. Remember that, folks. That's important. No, it's actually a shortcut for pressing square and triangle together. Now, again, not going to mess with it because that's the default. That's what I'm used to. There is no option for Japanese voice acting, but unlike Samurai Warriors and Samurai Warriors 2... The voice acting in this game is actually good. I mean, really good. Like, good. The only thing I'm sad about is that there is no option for subtitles. So, Hero Story is, well, basically story mode, and then Quick Battle is, like, free mode in Samurai Warriors. So, there you go. There's not much more you, I, can, I can put into it. Now to start off, since this is a brand spanking new game we're playing here, no one has been leveled up, no one has gotten any weapons or anything, I'll have to unlock the characters as we go. So, the way it's going to work first is we have Ieyasu Tokugawa, Mitsunari Ishida, Yukimura Sanada, Kanbei Kuroda, Kuroda, Kuruda. maybe I'm not saying it right, but he's a pretty cool dude, and then Magoichi Saika. Oh, and Masamune Date. I can't believe I almost forgot him. Sorry. So, uh, you'll notice straight away that even at level 1, Ieyasu here apparently has 30,000 HP. Don't let that number thrill you. That just basically means he has a normal amount of health. <laughs> his attack power is 352 and defense is 220. The little yellow icon above his health, that indicates his natural element. Every character has an element associated with them and can inflict extra damage when they have the right weapon. In this case, his element is light, and from the cutscene, as you can tell, Mitsunari is dark element. The two are opposed. 
Yukimura naturally is fire. Kanbe is, I believe, wind, or possibly earth. Magoichi is also fire, and then Masamune here is lightning! The way I plan on doing it is first we're going to start with Ieyasu's story, then Mitsunari, and then Magoichi. After that, I'm probably just going to record whatever character I feel like. <laughs> so let's start with Ieyasu. Let us unite and form a bond. Now, unlike Samurai Warriors, this game is actually not almost dickishly hard when you first start a fresh character on normal. It's actually just normal. Unity. There is nothing more powerful than the will of people united for a cause. Hideyoshi Toyotomi, if you continue to try and force your will upon this land... I will stop you! This land will be joined by the bonds of peace! Bonds made between warriors. We will know peace again. It was a dream to unite the country. A dream envisioned by a young lord named Ieyasu Tokugawa. After losing in battle to the forces of Lord Hideyoshi, Ieyasu was forced to resign his efforts to unify the lands. Meanwhile, Hideyoshi had taken control of the country. He planned to expand his kingdom with complete disregard to the innocent lives he would destroy. Ieyasu objected and with the intention of ruling the country himself, defeated Hideyoshi. However, there was still one man who stood in Ieyasu's way. Mitsunari Ishida, a subordinate of Hideyoshi, was enraged by his lord's defeat and swore revenge. This marked the beginning of a battle that would split the country, Ieyasu being the general of the east, and Mitsunari, the general of the West. As the inevitable war approached, Ieyasu set out to meet with a group of mercenaries known as the Saika faction, in hopes of forming an alliance. Tell me, are the men ready for action? Yes, we await your command, my lord. Very good. We are going to ally ourselves with the Saika faction. Those who wage war at their side know only victory. They say the Psycho faction never align with any, except warriors of the greatest prowess. 
true. Our task will not be a simple one. That is why I have summoned you, Tadakatsu. I'm at your service. Our path has been a rocky one, yet we cross the miles unbroken. Never will we know defeat. I swear it. Mitsunari, surely I'm not alone in feeling so emboldened. Okay. So we have a lot to cover before we actually get to fight. I know, I know. <laughs> it's important. Once we cover it, it's just straight up battles. So we press uh, square, we get our current situation, which lets us know where we are. And not much else, because I don't know which color represents which faction. All I know is yellow is... that dark yellow is us. That's about it. So from here we can choose battles, we can choose to equip, go to the Basada Mart, the guide, um, check guide panels and the path taken through the hero story, or options. Now with the uh, system details, is that what it is? Oh right, that's little help panels which will pop up as we fight. Now there's no history because we haven't actually done anything yet, but this is kind of a handy way to guide ourselves through the various storylines. You see. Every character has four story paths that they can follow, which are thankfully color-coded red, blue, green, and purple. Some characters don't have four, but most do. The way I'm going to do it is I'm going to go through everyone's main red storyline first, which is what I consider to be canon, or close to it. This is what was intended. Once you go through it at least once, when you start over again, you can switch over to the blue line green line or the purple line, whatever. So, um, yeah. Let's start with red, go through everyone, then come back again, second run through, do the blue. <laughs> but that is a long, long ways off. Uh, the Bizarre Mart is where we can create accessories with materials and money, but we don't have any accessories or materials or money, so we won't even bother going there right now. Equipment! Here we can change our weapon, which we won't do because we only have our basic weapon, the Bond Bracers. Uh, but there are plenty of other weapons that we can use eventually. Accessories! We can equip accessor accessories, accessories to every weapon we have equipped. Now, we only have one spot available, but we can improve upon it. But as you can see here, we ain't got jack in the way of accessories, and there are plenty of accessories to choose from. So again, not even going to bother with it. Super Arts. Now, what this is, is it's going to actually show us what our um, Basada Arts, not our Basada Arts, it's going to show us what our special arts are. In this case, pressing triangle, we'll use the Providence Punch, and then pressing forward and triangle, we'll use the Fang Fist, which we can combo into normal arts, which is pretty cool. The others, requiring R1 and L1 and triangle, are not available yet because we haven't leveled up enough. And then R2 are our super arts, again, we haven't leveled up enough to use them. Now with Ieyasu, since he likes to fight with his fists, he can combo most of his moves into his normal combos, which is pretty nice. He also specializes in charge moves, also pretty nice. Now we don't have any allies, nor do we have any other garments, so again, not even going to bother with it. Now the way battles work is, usually whenever we pick one particular path we want to follow, there may be one or two battles that we can choose between. So even if you choose to stay on one set path, it's still going to end a little different, because there are some battles you might fight, some battles you might not fight. I'm not going to go through every single variation, because that would take an insane amount of time. So. Here we go. I've explained everything as best as I, as I can explain it for now, so we'll begin with the Saika Stronghold. The boss, Magoichi Saika. We beat her, we win. Let us be off before Mitsunari manages to forge a pact with the Saika first. Yes, my lord. As you command. Yes, Tadakatsu is what amounts to a Gundam. I don't know why. The 
bell toll for the proud Psycho faction. Soon you will know the superior strength we possess. Alrighty then. So we have our map in the upper right. We have our KOs in the low. We have enemies who are trying to charge at us, I think. No, they're waiting patiently. Also, really neat little thing, characters in this game actually have idle animations, which is really cool. Now, a special thing I should note about Ieyasu is all characters, if you press select, have a taunt. Ieyasu's is a little special. He'll put up his hood. If you press it again... Concentrate. Also cool. Now, since he has charge moves, if you put his hood up, his charge moves charge up faster, but his hood can blow back. Anyways, I'm taking too much time with this. Let's get on with it. You want to see me beat up on people. Blue boxes here contain money, which is called Zenny, which uh, just appeared below above my KO count, so now we know how many we have. He likes to fight with his fists, which you can charge for a slower but much more powerful combo, which is just insanely strong. Hi there. That was Fang Fist, which you can actually combo by pressing forward and triangle, and then square for another hit, which is nice. Ouch. I got shot. And then, Providence Punch. Ouch! Little Falcon Punch going on for you there. Do not step on those. They are bad for you. Since this is the first stage, the game will give us little handy tips. We step on it, a cage pops up around us. Fortunately, we can break our way out of it. Too long, Magoichi. I have come in the hopes that our people may fight as one. You are wise to wish it so. But am I wise to grant it? We stand only with the finest. All right. Now the little boxes that we keep picking up, those have items that we can use to build accessories, but we won't find out what's what until after the battle is over. Now, these gates here, or these camps, they are connected to the strength of the final boss in each level. The more of them we destroy, the easier the boss becomes to defeat. So it's usually well worth your effort to take the time to destroy them. Also, for whatever reason, it spawns a whole bunch of enemies that are just like, Oh fuck, what do we do? Unfortunately, by capturing this camp, all those lovely little traps have been. Only once activated. have I been so humiliated, and I will make sure this was the last. Yes, and you will get officers that just basically keep chit chatting and talking through the duration of the level. Oh yes, characters have the ability to dash. If you just run for a little while, eventually they'll get up to speed. Eventually, eventually, there we go. Or, you can just double tap up and you'll just take off running at full speed straight away. The camera in this game controls so smooth. The Wagtail. Yeah, you want to watch out for these. Because they drop fucking bungee sticks. First, I will strip you of your owner. And what's really You're scary confident. is, no matter which side Good. you drop through, a man who lacks the wherewithal to champion his own cause is of no use to me. Then please allow me to earn your faith. No matter which side you break the rope on, oh hi there. The other side will always drop punji sticks on. For example, I came through on the other side, so one would think the punji sticks would drop behind me. Nope, they still drop in front of me. Ow, with the bullets. I'll be able to use more exciting and interesting combos once I actually unlock more moves. But for the time being, I'll just use what I can. Retreat! But don't let them follow you! Oh, and he also does an elbow drop for his air charge, which is kind of neat. Now the really neat thing about Providence Punch is you can actually charge it up while you're attacking. So you can actually end it in a combo at high power. Like that. Yes, Katakatsu, we're doing good. 
We must sing a song for them. Honor their loyalty. Ooh, that was a special item box. <sighs> Tend to him until he wakes. All right. Now, in every level, there are two special bonuses that you can obtain. Hello. Whoa, that's a Gatling gun. Okay, you need to knock that off. All right, the hero gauge is fully charged. Excellent. This pleases me greatly. Now, I normally don't do this, but I think I'm going to actually activate his Basada art early. You know, given the rate at which they're throwing those, you'd think they someone would fuck up and throw styles, one inside. Yet every blow connects. I would hope to never face the Psyche faction in battle. Hi there. How many of us do you wish to fight before you give up? May my fists unite all! There's no point in trying to deny it. They're better than us. Alright, see, that's the only thing I don't like about this game, is at the beginning and end of everyone's Basada art, they say something. But because NPCs chatting at you are louder than that, oftentimes you don't catch what your character says at the beginning or end. And that pisses me off, because I like what they say. But it's okay. You can't have everything. Ow, not a katsu. Do you mind getting out of the way so I can see what I'm doing, buddy? And I just got shot. And knocked away. Okay, seriously? Oi. If you get over 500 hits, and it's really not that hard to do, you go into a frenzy in which everything you hit drops points. If you can get up to a thousand hits while you're in frenzy, you go into a super frenzy. Or if you can just get to, you know, a thousand hits, you'll still go into frenzy. Do not lament, but pray that the next generation should pass down our story. Nope, the timer ran out. It's okay. It's okay. What a wicked assault. Now, I believe I was saying before that uh, every level has two special rewards that you can obtain by doing specific things. I don't know what to do in every single level, but I do know what to do here. At least for one of them. One of them is to find this secret camp. What? See, How if I had actually um, continued on to the next area without finding this camp, they would have ambushed me and Maguichi would have been like, Huh, yeah, you suck as a fighter because you couldn't find an ambush partner. So this goes towards gaining her respect, thankfully. Yes, that was a horse. I would explain the horses. Actually, no, I won't because there will be a level where we have to ride a horse eventually and then the controls will be explained. So that's like several videos away. I'm not even going to bother with this. Because really, the levels are not insanely huge like Samurai Warriors are. This is really small, actually. And you can cover the distance required pretty quickly on the game. None of these characters are really that small. And since everybody can infinitely dash anyway, there's really no point in riding a horse unless it's required for something. And like I said, there is one stage where it is absolutely required that you ride a damn horse. Oh! That hammer item you picked up, same thing as a frenzy. Beat on enemies, they drop money. Also, money you pick up, I think, is worth more. Yes. But it doesn't last very long, unfortunately. Them's the breeze. A gun versus a sword. You know which one is superior, right? I wouldn't know, considering I'm not using a gun. I'm now using a fist. Everyone, follow me! Ow. He's got blindsided by a piece of dynamite. I'm not sure how I feel about that. We should shoot them down now, before they can do any more harm! Here we go. 
And then you get these guys who glow red and get all cocky, like, I, I could do this, and then knock you out of your combos, and then you get angry. And then bad things happen. Wonderful. Another arrogant guest. Alright, only two camps left to go. Yes, two, How because believe it or not, it's very last. easy to forget that the I boss actually has won't. a camp with them. And I completely talked over Magaluchi, and I apologize to those of you who are listening. I will try not to, but it's very hard to do because you never know when they're gonna chime in. And they chime in often! I do like Providence Punch. I really do. We now, do technically not speaking, only the disgrace of our honor. Now, yes. technically speaking, I could have just skipped straight up to Magaluchi and fought her, but with all of those camps at her disposal, she would have been very hard to beat. Okay, look, dude, you gotta knock that off. Well, it's overkill, buddy. May my fists unite all! How? I one day we'll be as one! Yes, you got to say it. Awesome, I feel better now. Also, if you activate hero mode while you, when you use your... Uh, sorry, if you activate hero mode and then use your uh, Subiu Basada art, it'll actually say something different, which is kind of weird. Ow. That was not supposed to happen. Still not doing it right. Ah, come on! Damn it! Alright, they're getting their vittles up here, and I don't like it. It's your fault! We surround them. We risk hitting our own. Our reputation will be That's what happens if you let them gang up around you. They get cocky. They get really cocky and start knocking you around. Whoa, Tadakatsu. Buddy. Yo, yo! You, you want to back off and let me take care of this? I mean, I know you got that giant rape drill thing as a primary weapon, but, you know. The next time we meet, we should first exchange greetings. And that is something I do like. It's like, not everyone is gonna... Not every... There aren't so many main characters that you end up getting cutscenes with, uh, introduction cutscenes every couple of minutes, like you would in Samurai Warriors. I have a bad feeling about this, but it is only a feeling, after all. Really, guys? I was trying to have an epic, awesome-looking moment, and you're all like, oh, I got this! Get the fuck out of here! Yeah. Oh, you got something to say, too? All right, no. get out of here. Go away. Go away. Trying to have a moment. Concentrate. Okay, that's all I was trying to do. But no, you had to go and be difficult. What is it that you fear the most? Your own death, or the shame of defeat. Either way. Know that there is nothing we fear. Nothing at all! We are the Psycho Faction! Prepare to face us if you dare! Yeah. Let us begin. But remember this. Weakness will only earn you our enmity. I assure you, you'll see no weakness today. An alliance is but a means to an end. What do you seek? The glory of conquest? So, like I said, glory. it's very easy to Not forget. Oh, come on, guys. I wish to bring peace to the land. And I'm in need of your expertise to do so. As I was trying to say before I was so rudely interrupted, um, it, it's very easy to forget that there's actually a camp located near the boss, so... Keep an eye out for that and destroy it so you can actually make the fight easier. And thankfully, since this is the boss camp, you don't have to worry about a shit ton of enemies spawning in panic once you destroy it. 
Usually, the other special reward in this stage is that you'll actually get, uh, if you destroy all the camps, you get a special reward. Usually. But not always. And once again, I was wrong, because I thought it wouldn't spawn a shit ton of guys. I guess it's only a certain fight. I believe I do. No, I am certain of it. I will convert as many souls as possible. This is hero mode. Whenever it's activated, if you kill enemies, you'll actually get more time added to it. Time also stands still whenever you use it's your moves out here. Unfortunately, all, because she was talking, I couldn't use the other thing I wanted to say. Thanks, Makuichi. Thanks for making this harder. I, I, I not for the battlefield or otherwise. Thankfully, unlike Samurai Warriors, even though Tadakatsu is here Stop and could totally ruin things for me, he's keeping his distance and letting this be a mostly one-on-one -on -one fight, which is nice. Burning ash and molten tallow. The smell Where, where'd she go? I lost her? Okay. Her troops, on the other hand, don't seem to have that qualm. Look how the sheep flock to the slaughter. May my fist she unite totally all! Nope, I got her. I got her. I got her. Now feel its flames. One day we'll be as one. I'm afraid this won't end the way you hope it to. Now there is one more thing I should mention about taunting. If you can successfully taunt while in combat with an enemy like this, yourself. you will actually gain some of your Basada gauge back, which is good. I've heard about Not very much, but a little. One. I think uh, the closer you are, the more. Oh, oh god! Oh god! Please block it all. You should know we frown upon flattery. Oh, there she is. This cool. is our way. What will you do? But it's a little Wait, tricky to do, and you saw that she started taunting the moment I did. But I think the closer you get, the more effective it is. Oh, she threw the dynamite. We sweat neither blood nor fear, only iron and pride as true warriors. Excuse me, Tata. Oh, oh. No one commands us, only ourselves. Ow, turn around. Are those mercenaries? I lost her. There she is. I'm hoping that something has happened that I want to see. I, I'm hoping this happens. A pact, a trade, a battle, or a mercy. What is it you seek from us? Ready for an extra troop. Get the, the fuck out of here. The life of a mercenary is not an easy one. Even our allies can be enemies. Excuse me, let me deal with this guy and get him out of the way so it's a fair fight. Fair ish. What price have you put on Where our heads? You leave. Get out. Just, just get out. Okay. The most reliable means by which to win the battle. Ow, dynamite, ow. Well, since you don't want to do what I want Let's you to see do. If the blood of warriors truly runs through your veins. <laughs> I think I've seen enough heroics for one day. That took a little longer than planned. Ieyasu Tokugawa, we hereby join you in alliance. Hear us now! We are the Psycho Faction! The red bell rings! The pact we have made shall be known to all! Let it toll! Let the bell call out across the land! Magoichi, may I ask you a question? Go on. It's Mitsunari. I thought he might have... <clears throat> Mitsunari! You came to the Psyka, as I did. 
None of that matters anymore. Prepare yourself, Ieyasu. I'm going to kill you here and now! But you, Magoichi Saika, you stay out of this. You forget this is our land, and you are an intruder. Leave. I shall teach him some manners. I can't. Do not mistake my demand for kindness. This is our land, and we'll defend it. Of course. Next time. Yasu, don't you dare run away! Yasu! It's easy to run away when you have a, a flying Tadakatsu Gundam. It really is. So those are Hatena boxes. The red ones are the great Hatena boxes. These all contain lovely, lovely items that we can use to make accessories. And oh, there are so, so many. Power up opens with accessories. Yes, it's explaining that. You need money and you need materials, which we have both of now, or will in a moment. Acquiring materials requires. Let's see. We do, okay, there are beginning. There are regular materials which you can get anywhere, and then there are regional materials that you can only get in certain battles. So apparently, we can get different items based on how well we fight, how high our hit counts go, uh, how many KOs we have, how many special camps we occupy, and so on and so on and so forth. So again, the more camps you occupy per battle, the better off you'll be. So it's really worth the extra effort to do that. Let's see, Fire Charm. This is a straight up accessory. You can actually just straight up get accessories. So with this, all allies receive zero fire damage. When fighting Magoichi, that's perfect. Coal, you can get it anywhere. Silver, you can get that just about anywhere. This is the only place you can get Shinju. That is. The Grey Boar, which ups in Basara Art attack power. Very nice. We also got the Grey Handcart, which increases luck and Grey Titana Box chances. Another item we want to add. Yeah. More coal, more coal, and what is that? Dim Sum? No, that's Mboshi, which is salted plums that are dried in the sun. We got our skill reward, armor break, hit streak, KO reward. Nice. Copper Orb, Iron Beads, Jade Beads, a Footman Folding Fan, and a Footman Bracelet. And we got ourselves a brand new weapon, the Demon Crusher, which we will be switching over to. We did alright. Now, I don't know... No, you see here we have a uh, number of KOs, our hit streak, which plays into it, number of camps we captured, we found the Raiding Party. That was a special reward. I don't know what the other reward is. We have no allies, so we don't get any allies or accessory bonuses. And we didn't have any EXP multiplier, so it was a pretty average stage, and we went up 9 levels. Our health gauge went up. We've learned the new art, Sun Splitter. You are now one of us. And we got ourselves a new ally. I'll explain more about allies in the next episode. But for now, though, we've earned ourselves a new title, a new trophy, another new title called Frenzy Noob. And I think, boys and girls, that that is going to be it for this episode. Next time on Let's Play Sengoku Basada Samurai Heroes, I explain more about the ally system, making accessories, and we proceed on to the next battle, whatever it may be.